to Retro Ticket. This is Hari. In this series, we will be revisiting some of the famous yesterday films which played an important role in building the careers of many film personalities, shaped Indian cinema to what it is today or were just summer padam as we like to call them. In this episode, we feature a much loved film, Murutukale, which was released in 1980. This movie was a big stride in Rajini's journey from being an actor to becoming a superstar. This also marked the beginning of his fruitful association with the legendary AVM Studios and an important film in his prolific partnership with director S.P. Muthuraman. S.P. Muthuraman was already an established name with an impressive body of work including Bhuvana Oru Kelvi Kuri and R. Ilindu Arubudu Varai. But this was arguably the movie that took him to the league of box office magician in partnership with Kamal and Rajini. The hero intro shot sees Rajini literally be catapulted from background to foreground in a swinging bullet cart. From everyday actor to the superstar, from one among the many to the leader of the pack. This movie also established Jay Shankar as an anti-hero, something he would build on for the rest of his career. AVM, who produced this movie after a 7 to 8 year sabbatical, seemed to have taken a calculated big bet to launch their production house into the mainstream. They moved out from their studio-based films and embraced the naturalism revolution that was happening in the late 70s, championed by Bharati Raja and Mahendran, who took the film settings to villages. This change by AVM to go with the then current trend, along with the rising popularity of Rajini and Elai Raja, made this movie resonate well with the masses. Right from that exciting introduction sequence and the jolly cutter scenes that follow, to a lot of stylishly executed stunt sequences by Master Judo Ratnam, a bullock cart chase, a brilliantly orchestrated train action set piece, as well as the beautiful visuals of Western Guards in Tamil Nadu, captured wonderfully by cinematographer Babu and almost perfectly cut by editor Vittal. AVM Studios leave no stone unturned to make this an iconic movie, running at the theatres for more than 150 days and setting the cash registers ringing like never before. The director notes that they were very specific in selecting the location of the village to be around Pollachi, so that they could get a village surrounded not just by green fields and waterways, but also rugged mountains and beautiful dense forests, which all add to the authenticity and character of the film. It is an uncomplicated movie without any of the trappings that seem to have bogged down the genre in subsequent years. It is a simple story of a rich zamindar, Jay Shankar, wanting to wrest control over an entire area and in trying to achieve that, crosses paths with Rajini, a virtuous farmland owner. Their battle over the land disputes and also love interest played by Rati forms the crux of the story. Every character from the rich zamindar to the sister played by Sumalata, as well as the hero's faction, Rajini and his four brothers, seem to have clearly edged storylines of their own. If Jay Shankar is turned on by power, Sumalata is seen to crave the attention of Rajini and even the standard Kanakapilla character as sidekick to Zaminda, played by Suruli Rajan, has clear motive for his actions. It is very rare to see a family in a masala film without women around, but Rajini and his brothers seem to be living a simple and spartan life. This sets the stage up for the ideal women to enter their lives. Rati, the village-bred girl, seems delighted in taking up this role. In stark contrast, the city-educated rich girl Sumalata clearly has no intention of playing a mother to five grown-up men. This ends up being the reason for her advances getting rejected by Rajini earlier in the movie. We were pleasantly surprised that Jay Shankar was not positioned as an outright villain from the outset. Maybe because even he was just getting used to being the bad guy, transitioning from his famous Indian James Bond persona from the previous decade. We see an organic build-up of his animosity towards Rajini with ample seasoning provided by Suruli Rajan and a twist of fate that lands Rati seeking refuge in Rajini's home as the damsel in distress. It is not until the second half of the film that Jai Shankar transforms into a venomous villain, one who doesn't hesitate to kill at will to get what he wants. Rajas's brilliant songs warrant special mention and elevate a fairly straightforward love track. The masterful background score keeps us watching in a very predictable final hour of the movie. While we were expectedly blown away by Poduvaga M. Manasu Tango and in the Poovilum Vasa Mundu, we also loved the other two songs, Mama Macha and Pudu Vannangal. It was indeed interesting to note that Enda Poovilum had an orchestral feel to it, with the grass swaying in the wind to complement the heroine's dance movement in the foreground. The visual for the line, Tanjamene Thedi Vande, Devamene Nindrai, is Rajini posing as God in plain clothes and Rati falling at his feet. This was originally shot with Rajini as Lord Krishna and Rati as Radha. We definitely enjoyed revisiting this interesting film and hope you tried too. This may not be as celebrated as Mullum Malarum or Padinaru Vaidinile and is definitely not to be viewed through such a lens. We should acknowledge this genre's unmistakable entertainment value and its role in creating a very thriving film trade in the 80s. Watch Murutakalai for some vintage Rajni charisma, some Raja magic as well as some fantastic action sequences. You may need to be warned that such films don't age as well as the classics and some segments can come across as much less novel today. Enjoy it as a ride down the memory lane. This movie is available on Amazon Prime. We hope you enjoyed. 
we will see you next week with another retro ticket review of a movie from the 80s see you